So this talk is about uh, T4 templates with Entity Framework Core 7. Um, my name is Erik Eilskov Jensen, and my social handle is Erik EJ, and you can catch me on Twitter, on GitHub, and I also have a blog on github.io. Uh, I'm a maintainer of EF Core Power Tools and SQLite Toolbox and some other Nougat packages. And I'm also contributing to uh, EF, uh, Microsoft EF Core and SQL Client uh, open source projects. So let's just see. So I'm talking about uh, T4 and um, what is T4? Let's just quickly step a little bit back in time. It actually turns out that it's a 17 year old technology. Uh, called Text Template Transformation Toolkit, so 4Ts or T4. Uh, and it looks like it was jointly developed by uh, Novell, who uh, owned Mono at the time, and Microsoft in 2005, and has been included in Visual Studio 2008 and every version since then. Uh, it had a kind of a bright life in, during the time frame of uh, Inti Framework six uh, or and previous versions where it was used in you know, customizing uh, reverse engineering um, and then uh, in 2014 i think an issue was created to do the same thing in the uh, entity framework core and here we are only eight years later um, it's actually happened in uh, ef core 7 which was just released a couple of days ago of course as you probably all know so let's just jump right into the demo. Uh, I have a solution here um, in Visual Studio where I have uh, the code templates installed and um, I have uh, created a model uh, using uh, EF Core Power Tools. Um, I could also use uh, command line tooling from EF Core, uh, DB Context Scaffold to do that, but I have created, I have used the EF Core Power Tools to do this. Uh, so what I have done is I have created, um, right click the project, gone into reverse engineering and EF Core Power Tools, selected the Northwind database and specified that I'm using EF Core 7. Um, it will now show me all the database objects in Northwind. And uh, then I have set an option to customize code uh, using T4 templates. And uh, that will actually dump the templates in the folder here. Um, but before we look deeper into them, let's just try to add a, a T4 template um, to the project so we can just go through what are the components of a T4 template. So I will go and add a new item. <coughs> text template. And let's call it dot net. And you can see I'm, if you're doing this at home, you will probably not see this nice uh, color highlighting that I'm seeing on my screen um, because uh, there is not really any built-in support for editing these files in Visual Studio, sadly. Uh, but uh, luckily, um, somebody from the EF Core team has created an extension. Uh, let me just figure out what it's called. Um, installed a T4 language, and it's actually Bryce Lamson from the EF Core team that has created this extension, um, which does hot color highlighting. Uh, at the moment, I think there are some very ambitious plans. Um, IntelliSense does really nice color highlighting, so uh, the make to make these files readable. So if we look at a T4 file, it consists of a, some directives which uh, define the environment for the file, for the template and uh, including like what uh, using statements are, do you want to use in your c -sharp code uh, that's part of the, of the template? And I think this has to do with the compilation of the template, I'm not exactly sure. And then there's some template settings like what language is the template generation language and the uh, IUD thing. And then there's also specifying what type of file you are creating. So when, if you look at this file in Visual Studio, 
look at the properties of this file in Visual Studio. You can see there's a uh, let me just show here. And go zoom a bit. You can see there's this text templating, text templating generator custom tool associated with this file. So that means every time it's saved uh, and an associated file is actually created uh, and it has a, uh, an extension text. So let's just open this file. It's just empty at the moment. So let's see if we can get it here on the same screen here. So every time it's saved, it's processed and um, all the contents of the template except the directives are spit out into the text file. So if we type hello .net conf, and now I will save the file. You can see that text will be injected in the in the generated text file. So you can also do um, statements. Um, so date time dot now for example so this is similar to um, uh, where everything that is within the statement is evaluated and then output as a string um, so if I save here we will see the date and time and uh, you can also do processing uh, and this of course is where it really com becomes powerful because you can have like a you can refer to a collection of uh, objects or it could be a collection of entities in your DB context and you can iterate over those and for each of those you can then generate code. Here I'm just adding some code using um, the statement um, delimiter for generating uh, some square calculations. So let's try to save this and we will see that the code is generated now. So uh, as I said, I was using just, um, so this was a very quick intro to how to work with the uh, TT files. I um, think that should be enough to get you going. So what I'm doing here is, um, <clears throat> is of course I used EF Core Power Tools to install a template, but there's also other ways to get them. Uh, you can install them by the command line as a global uh, .NET template. Um, I'll just show you the command for that. So this uh, here, and we will switch to the developer PowerShell down here. Um, let's get that here. So uh, this will uh, install the templates. I think they are already installed uh, on my machine. Uh, so they will not be reinstalled, but I could actually reinstall them by using this hyphen hyphen force. Uh, and this will install them uh, so they're globally av available. Uh, and then I can use them with .NET new um, and add them to my project. So let's just try to remove them from the current project here. So now I'll just remove them. And then I can use .NET new. Um, EF hyphen templates. And you can immediately see the templates um, reappeared in my project up here. By convention, oh, let's just zoom in again. By convention, the templates appear in the EF core, uh, code templates EF core folder. And there's actually two templates one for generating the DB context and one for generating the entity types. Let's have a closer look at them. So, so again, we can see some of the directives. Uh, it's now referring to some entity framework assemblies because that is what exposes the object model that we can use for code generation and all the properties of a, that describes uh, the, the object model that we can model um, using uh, the template. And then we have some conditional processing uh, mixed with code uh, generated code. So this is, if you have looked at a DB context before, 
this line will look familiar. And then uh, there will be a loop for each entity type. It will generate the entity type configuration inside the DB context uh, on, <clears throat> on model creating method. And the entity type will actually also loop over the same collection, but it will actually create an individual file for each, um, uh, sorry, each model in your con DB context. And the output of that is what you can see in this folder. So let's just try to run this. Uh, you can use .NET uh, EF uh, database scaffold uh, to run this, but I will just use a uh, feature in EF Core Power Tools where I can just refresh my uh, <coughs> DB context. So now the code will be generated using the um, code templates. And of course, it should look similar to what we've done already because we just did it earlier. So there will be no changes. Um, so what can we do once we have these templates in hand? We can customize them. And that is basically why you would want to use the templates and not just use the built-in scaffolding uh, because it does exactly the same as these, temp as these vanilla templates does. So for example, um, in some scenarios, you would, could want to um, use observable collection for list types instead of um, the standard list. Um, so down here somewhere. <clears throat> so down here, whenever there's a collection, it's now mapped to, it's currently mapped to a list. But in some scenarios, for example, for desktop scenarios, uh, where you're using a, a, a UI framework similar to WPF, you could you sometimes want to use a, a, a collection called observable collection, which interact <coughs> sorry which interacts with the UI because it it's um, able to tell the UI when items are added or removed from the list. So we can use observable collection here. And notice that I don't have any. Uh, intelligence when I'm up observable collection when I when I'm doing this um, so in order to do this I changed uh, the type to observable collection in addition to that since observable connection is defined in system collections object model namespace I need to add that namespace to the usings for the entity type. And those usings are defined up here. So I will add an extra using here. Um, so now I save the template. This template doesn't run when I save it. You can see there's no un associated file underneath it. It will run when the EF core tooling runs. Um, so we need to refresh our code generation again, I will right click here and click refresh. So let's just actually, let's just look at the customer uh, class now. You can see it's new list order at the moment, a new list customer demographic. <clears throat> so let's try to refresh the code. <clears throat> So what's happening now is that the tooling is running and it's using this new updated uh, entity template. And you can see here that now we are using observable collection and the using that we added at the top is included up here. Uh, otherwise we would get compilation errors because we wouldn't know, the compiler wouldn't know what observable collection is. So another example of customization uh, let's uh, imagine that we have a customer rating. So we have a int here that presents the customer rating, but we actually all, already have a rating enumeration. Uh, and uh, we would actually like to use that enumeration for, uh, 
for the rating property instead of the in integer. And EFCore already knows that there's a, an, an easy mapping between a, a rating enumeration and an integer. But um, when we do reverse engineering, of course, our reverse engineering tooling doesn't know about the rating enum you know, because we haven't told it about it. So let's see if we can help it a little bit. Um, again, let's go to the entity type. <clears throat> so again, we will modify the entity type template. Um, Somewhere at the top here, we will add this piece of code. Um, what we're doing here is we're defining a list of um, mappings. So for the customer entity type um, and for the cost for the rating property in the customer entity type, use the rating enumeration. Um, and then you can add more uh, enumerations uh, if you have them into your to the to the list here. Um, this is just an example, so this is where you can expand it. And <clears throat> then we need to find the code where the enumeration is used. So let's just see here. So down here we should see where the property is rendered. Uh, collections, did I skip it? Yeah, so here I think it is. So we'll try to look up. Um, so here we will try to use link to find a matching um, enum tuple for the proper the current property and the current um, entity <clears throat> and if we find something we will use the enum type as the property name otherwise we will just fall back to uh, the, um, the previous one and then we will instead of um, using just code reference here to the CLR type we will use the property name that was set up here. So we need to get rid of these two lines. Instead, we can use this two lines. So again, let's save this. And again, we can refresh the model. And look at the customer. So now we have uh, the rating enumeration mapped instead of the integer we had before. So if you want to start developing, so these are just a couple of examples of the customizations you can do. And uh, basically the sky's the limit. All you're doing is coding in C sharp here, but uh, you can, as I have already hinted at, Imagine there are some challenges in terms of how do you get intelligence and how do you get the how do you debug a template? Um, intelligence you can actually get. I think you need a ReSharp or editor extension, and then you need a way to map the entity framework or to tell where the entity framework assemblies are. Uh, you can read more about this in my. Um, in my GitHub repository, there are some, some hints about that. Uh, it's not something I've been exploring extensively because I don't have ReSharp installed. Uh, but let's just look at how we implement, um, how we add debugging to a template. So as you can see here, there's this template uh, directives about how the template is running. And it actually has a debug uh, property that we can set to true. Um, save this. And then we need to, to launch the um, debugger once debugging is enabled. So here we need to start the debugger if it's attached. So let's just paste in a small snippet for doing that. <clears throat> so here, if the debugger is attached, 
like if I'm running it from F5 in the Visual Studio or a <clears throat> It will launch the debugger and I can step and into the code and inspect variables. Let's try that. So you can see now the debugger comes up. I press OK and oh I forgot to set a breakpoint app. Yeah, sorry. And um, now we're in in um, in a breakpoint and I can see uh, locals down here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I can inspect locals and variables and so on and step through the code as the template uh, gets uh, processed, which is uh, quite powerful because otherwise it can be a little opaque what is actually happening. So um, yes. So finally, um, I will just show you uh, an issue I have in um, in my Power Tools GitHub. Some additional um, customizations that can be done. So, for example, should you be, could you consider using date only instead of date time? Um, what about the ability to split the DB context configuration into multiple files? Uh, custom collection types. We already shown that enumerations. I notify property change properties instead of plain uh, getters and setters, and maybe custom collection initializes, um, potentially saving some memory. Uh, can we think about removing default constraints? So, <coughs> excuse me. So what I'm planning here is maybe make kind of a template, publish a template as, as an alternative to um, to what is offered for, uh, by default from the EF Core team. Uh, so kind of a super template where you can switch on and off these uh, additional customizations. Um, yeah, so um, there's still a work in progress and I'm still collecting ideas for how this can be uh, improved. That's all I had for now. Good stuff, Eric. Um, great to see that uh, using T4 stuff there that uh, Bryce worked on in this release. So, um, questions from the from the chat. Uh, first yes. question is: uh, Can T4 be used for model first or just database first? <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Um, it's it's the way it's designed is definitely based on database first. Yeah. Um, If, I mean, if you can describe if you can describe your your code first model in in something that can be represented as a database model yeah you could potentially do it but that would be a strange cumbersome right. way to go around things but if you could if you could represent a, a yaml file or an xml file or even some code that could be passed uh, easily and and uh, and recent on uh, in, in basically any format that then, then would generate as what is called a database model, which is something that if core use internal to represent yeah. the tables and the foreign key relationships. And then you could write a provider that provides this model for you and, and so, hook that into the, into this, but it would be. Yeah, it could be strange. used for the code generation part of it, but there'd be a lot of work, exactly. a lot of work to get to, to get to that. Yes, um, and I think in the meantime you could just have written the classes in C sharp. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know what? What is model first? What what yeah. language do you want to model? Um, you could yeah. already model in in a DDL in a database schema type of way and do database first, or you can model in C sharp and yeah. and do that way. So model first, yeah. I guess, means model in some other way than that. Yeah, but then um, if you have an XML file, certainly you could you could write a and an XML database model yeah. provider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one more question: Did you use SQL Lite for this? You could uh, use SQL Lite. Any, 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 pro any, any provider, provider. Any provide any any uh, full featured provider uh, yeah. provides a database model. It's part of the like the contract between what EF Core expects from a provider and what yeah. a provider needs to supply. So any provider includes code to to browse uh, the schema of, of its database, 
whether it's being a SQLite database or an Oracle database or whatever uh, the providers uh, are mm -hmm. out there, and then provide a database model that represents the tables and the foreign keys. And based on that model, the model that we are working with here is generated. Absolutely, yeah. Um, no more questions from from the YouTube, but I, I guess one of the things I noticed, um, you know, watching what you were doing is an advantage here from, let's take the enum example. Um, yes. You could, of course, just generate your code and then edit it to use the enum. But then if you try and regenerate, you lose the edit you've done. So this is a it's kind of a nice way of getting your code the way you want it. And then in the power tools, you can just hit that refresh and it's just going to, you know, not write over with an integer again. Um, Correct. And if, if so, if and if you want to add like business methods or something like that to your entities, I, I would not really recommend that. But you could you could or have a scenario where you want to do that, or maybe some calculated property or something. Yeah, you can do yeah. that in what in what is called partial classes, and they will not get re regenerated or overwritten when you hit the the refresh yeah, button yeah. again. But certainly for the rating, if you if you don't include that in a generated code, it will always reappear as an int, and then you have to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, clarification on the question about SQLite: Which Visual mm -hmm. Studio extension did you create to use SQLite and Entity Framework? I yes. yeah, I'm not sure that you were using SQLite, so. Um, I was right. not using SQLite. I was actually yes. using a, a SQL server, a local SQL server database called Northwind. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know where this, like, but yeah. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Uh, well, thanks, Eric. Uh, great session. Uh, great to see you presenting this stuff. Um, thanks for all the welcome. work you've done over the years yes. on the power tools and everything. And um, we will. And, and uh, of course, remember, remember to tune into the <laughs> to the EF Core main presentation yes. later today, uh, you will be Pacific. you will be blown away by the new performance uh, improvements in EF Core 7 absolutely yes uh, all right thanks eric